A very good morning to you students. I hope you remember that today we are going to begin with a new lesson. I feel very excited and happy to introduce to you the most popular and prolific writer of the 20th century, George Bernard Shaw. All of you, I think, would be interested in knowing a little bit about the life of this great man. He was the best of the many Irishmen who wrote plays in the English language. He was born in Dublin in the year 1856 into a lower middle class family. His father was a failed corn merchant and his mother a professional singer. He learned music from his mother who left Dublin to live in London. Shaw completed his schooling in Dublin and went on to join as a clerk and a cashier in a land agent's office. Very soon, he realized that his father was unqualified to be the head of the family and that his mother was more interested in her music than in her children. This made Bernard Shaw develop a highly independent spirit and mind which enabled him to look upon mankind and its affairs without being swayed by custom or other people's conventional ideas of good and bad. It is not by accident that many of his plays deal with difficult parent-child relationships. Children who are brought up in isolation from their parents, orphans, foundlings, and adopted heirs, and even parents who presume that they are entitled to their children's obedience and their affections. A man with many a mission, Bernard Shaw, supported abolition of private property, a radical change in the voting system. He campaigned for the simplification of spelling and a reform of the English alphabet. Until Bernard Shaw started writing for the theatre, there was hardly a British playwright who took up current religious, political and social topics as subjects for his plays. Bernard Shaw began with the assumption that quite a lot has already been said about the emotional tangles of men and women. He made up his mind to write about public affairs which affect many people. He adopted an ironic tone in his plays which dealt with contemporary moral problems. His famous wit, which is given the name of Shavian wit, has given us uh, many priceless gems. One of them is, runs like this. He says that the single most difficult thing about communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And another one, America and England are two countries which are separated by a common language. Shaw wrote about 50 plays, some of the most famous of his being, Arms and the Man, Candida, Saint Joan, Man and Superman, and Pygmalion. He received the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1925. He wrote several prefaces for his plays, which are considered to be among the best prose essays that were ever written in English literature. He died in 1950, when he was almost 95 years. Although Shaw is best known for his plays, his wit and his satire, he was also an excellent public speaker. His energetic and his aggressively persuasive style enabled him to gain the status of one of the most sought after orators in England. Eloquence and honesty are the hallmarks of his oratory. Shaw's spoken English and broken English 
which we have taken for our study is a transcript of a radio talk that was recorded in the year 1927 and broadcast over Manhattan radio station New as a series of talks entitled A Treasury of the Spoken World. This radio talk brought to its listeners the ideas, voices and opinions of some of the most celebrated people in the world like Mahatma Gandhi, Franklin Roosevelt and Bernard Shaw himself. Bernard Shaw occupied a very prominent place in the early years of the radio in England. Fiesty, opinionated, witty and extremely provocative, he was the ideal radio personality for England. Before we look into the title Spoken English and Broken English and discuss it in detail, let us ask ourselves a very pertinent and important question. Why do we learn a language? We learn a language either native or foreign for communicative reasons. I'm sure all of you know that language is used both as a medium of speech as well as that of writing. The frequency of the use of whichever medium depends upon the communicative needs of the users of language. However, speech has been ex more extensively used than writing. There are many reasons for this. Speech comes first in the history of any language community. People learn to speak before they begin to write. A person learns to speak and then goes on to writing. Users of language tend to speak more than they write. Technical devices like the television, the tape recorder, the radio emphasize speech more than writing as a result of which there has been a tremendous growth in oral communication. I'm sure you're very curious to know students what the radio talk of Shaw's Broken English and Broken English is all about. Let us talk a little briefly about what he conveys in his radio talk. An ardent advocate of the simplification of language, Shaw says that even educated native speakers do not speak English correctly. In fact, he says, there is nothing that can be called correct English. No two British subjects pronounce words exactly alike. Whatever the difference in their pronunciation, Shaw says, that it can be said inarguably English speakers speak presentably and if one models his speech on their speech one would be understood in any English speaking country and even would be regarded as a person having a good social standing. Shaw in his speech also talks about manner. It plays a very dominant role in spoken English. For example, we have, we assume different manners when we are speaking with people who are close to us, to our family, to our brothers and sisters, and another manner when we talk to people that we do not know, people that we want to impress and people uh, we feel a little inhibitive about. He calls these manners home manners and company manners. We'll talk about this in detail a little later. Now let us come to the other part of the title, Broken English. Broken English is a term that is applied by linguists to bad or incorrect English. It is a dialect other than the standard English dialect. It may be fragmented, it may be incomplete, it may be marked by faulty syntax or inappropriate diction. Shaw says that foreigners 
need not spend sleepless nights learning to speak the language like the natives speak. A native speaker responds more favorably to a foreigner who speaks broken English because he does not have the same intonation, pronunciation or accent of the native speaker. He finds it difficult to understand the foreign, uh, a foreigner who speaks English correctly. Therefore, a foreigner need not worry about the grammar, about the correctness of his speech. He can speak with his own accent and he can also make mistakes. A native speaker will immediately identify him as a foreigner and will definitely extend his hand in support of the foreigner. Even among the English, it is considered to be pedantic affectation if one speaks too correctly and Shaw says in a foreigner it would be worse than affectation. Many non-native speakers who are highly influenced by their mother tongue speak in what can be put down as broken English. In several of my classes itself I have come across students who speak a lot of broken English. For example, when I ask them a question like this, what happened in the class yesterday? The most likely answer would be, I did not came yesterday. All of you realize that that is a mistake. And if I ask them if they knew an answer to a question, they would say, I doesn't know or they doesn't know. Now this definitely is broken English. I have with me a few examples of broken English which I am sure you will enjoy and learn from. I will read it out to you. My headache is paining. Open the windows and let the climate in. The principal is rounding the college. He hurted me. Let me catch water in the bucket. My head is making circles. Gandhi ate many blows in the jail. You can see the influence of the mother tongue very clearly in this sentence. Please grant me a loan as I want to do my intercourse. There are a few leave applications that are received by corporate officers. Mind you, they are real leave applications. They are hilarious and I'm sure you would enjoy them, but at the same time you should make sure that you do not commit the same mistakes. Now let's look into some of the hilarious leave applications. As I am marrying my daughter, please grant me a week's leave. As I have to go to my village to sell my land along with my wife, grant me leave. As I'm studying in this school, I'm suffering with headache. I request you to leave me today. My wife is suffering from sickness as I am her only husband at home. I may be granted leave. I'm suffering with fever. Please declare one day holiday. I want to shave my son's head. Please leave me for two days. My mother-in-law expired and I'm only responsible for it. Please grant me 10 days leave. Very funny, isn't it? Now students, we look into Shaw's radio talk a little more in detail. In this talk show, Spoken English and Broken English, he addresses two kinds of people. One, a foreign learner of the English language who wishes to speak English so that it can be understood in the British Commonwealth countries, as well as when he is in conversation with educated native speakers. Secondly, a native speaker 
who speaks in a provincial or Cockney dialect, of which he is a little ashamed and probably which stands in his way of securing a lucrative job which is res reserved for people who speak English well. Shaw puts to rest the fears of both these categories of people by saying that no one needs to worry about correct English because there is nothing that can be said to be correct English. The British Broadcasting Corporation, highly acclaimed as a centre of, of good spoken English, has on its committee a group of English speakers whose speech can be taken as a model in any society or in any employment. When Shaw was on the committee, the committee had as its chairperson the poet laureate of the time who was an expert in pronunciation. It also had an actor who was known for the beauty of his speech and also Shaw who sat on the rehearsal of his plays which involved professionally trained speakers. He himself was a speaker of long experience. But the members of the committee spoke differently from each other. It became difficult for people to choose as a model from among them because they came from different backgrounds and different countries. The committee had on board Irish people, Welsh, Scottish, Oxford University members and American members. All of them pronounced even the commonest of common words like yes or no differently. But Shaw says that their English was presentable, it was intelligible, it could be understood by people anywhere where English is spoken. It was worthy of emulation. That context determines intelligibility in spoken English, Shaw illustrates from his own life. He says that speaking to an audience is not by any stretch of imagination the same as speaking to one's wife. Speaking to one's wife is very different, it is informal. Shaw illustrates from his own life how his wife always complained that he mumbled, and that he turned his face away when he spoke to her, which made it very difficult for her to understand him. She also did not take care when she spoke to him, and it made it difficult for him to understand what she said. And he kept asking her again and again what she had said, and she would always think that he was growing deafer and deafer by the day, which possibly, Shaw says, Humorously, it may be true because he was nearing 70 years. Shaw in his talk says that there are two kinds of manners, home manners and company manners. Shaw says that if a learner of a language, enthusiastic about learning languages, were to visit an unknown family and were to listen into a conversation through a keyhole for a few minutes and listen to the conversation among the family members and then for probably enter the house, he would be astonished to see how differently the family converses with him. They have had a very different kind of conversation among them but when an outsider enters the house, it is a very different manner that they adopt. Their home manners immediately transform into company manners. In the last two paragraphs of his talk, Shaw devotes completely to foreigners, foreign learners of the English language. Shaw says, that English speakers, however bad their own English may be, will definitely understand English spoken well, but only by native speakers and not by foreigners. It is difficult for native speakers to, uh, to understand foreigners because Shaw says, to quote him, 
no foreigner can ever stress the syllables and make the voice rise and fall in question and answer, assertion and denial, in refusal and consent, in inquiry or information exactly as a native speaker does. So, it makes it very difficult for the native speaker to understand a foreigner. It would be better for a foreigner to stick to his own accent, however bad it may be, for then it would make it easy for the native speaker to identify a foreign accent and they would definitely respond favorably to English which is spoken badly by a foreigner than English which is spoken well by a foreigner. Shaw says in his last few lines of the radio talk that a foreigner need not pore over his books and labor to speak English like what he thinks it should be spoken because when he travels he realizes that how little of the language and its pronunciation one needs to know to find his way about his business in a foreign country. Now students we have gone through the entire radio talk spoken English and broken English by one of the most famous writers of the 20th century. But let me emphasize and tell you that what he has said about spoken English should not be applied to written English. Written English is an entirely different subject and Shaw does not even touch upon this subject in his spoken English and broken English. Though the radio talk was recorded in 1927, many, many years back and a lot of changes have taken place in the world. For example, there is an extensive use of English throughout the world, globalization and the increase in foreign travel which has led to a different opinion of the linguists about non-native speakers. Even then, what Shaw says about the nature of spoken English and that the context determines intelligibility of spoken English stands true even today. The examples that I have given you today about broken English students should not intimidate you. It is not funny. It is just that people, because they are not trained in the right manner, are not exposed to the right syntax and grammar in English. It just doesn't matter if you are not able to speak like the native speakers or like the English medium students. This is especially meant for Telugu medium students who have right through the education studied in one medium that is uh, a regional medium and then suddenly they are exposed to the English medium and it makes it difficult for them to speak. But this particular radio talk of Shaw's I am sure would be a moral booster to them because they need not worry about speaking wrong English. It is enough for them to make people understand them by using a few English words. But I hope you will not stop learning because of what Shah has said. We have to continue to perfect our learning and to speak as well as we can.